seen anything quite like it. This is proper rally. This is absolutely proper rally. Do you actually believe that I once had hair like this? <laughs> once, a long, long time ago, way back in the days of retro. I <laughs> once had... Photos or it didn't happen. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> and do you know what? I've been doing rallies for years, Kat, and, and what I like about the boys and girls that organise this rally is they just try, try to do things differently. And putting a theme to the rally really worked this time around. Bringing back the retro allowed a lot of people who really didn't expect to, to just, you know, just to show us a different side to the paddock, <laughs> to, to indulge maybe some of their 80s mm -hmm. fantasies, but like me. It was amazing, the liveries on the cars too, and the service vehicles, so yeah. impressive. Yeah. We're going to remember the rally because it was a fabulous rally, you know, and, and the sporting action on the stages was fabulous. But I, I think a lot of the memories were formed from silliness like this. First of all, who is responsible for the belts? I love it. Well, we're glad the zip tie's on your son, he's not on your car. No one's car, no one claiming this car. This one here, it's mine. That was perhaps the single most offensive interview I have ever done. He's old enough, he's sensible enough, he's daft enough not to get car sick. Brendan Reeves getting yeah, car sick. How does something like that happen? Hard to believe, isn't it? Hard to believe that it was once like that. It's now <laughs> like this. <laughs> Very professional. <laughs> Sunday morning, as I said, Kat, we're outside the wonderful, what is it, the Cuba Cafe? I Cafe think it is. Cuba. Cafe Cuba. Seems to be a bit of a hot spot in time. We've come out early. And listen, what a rally, what a day. Huge day yesterday. Mm -hmm. Expecting to see no one in town. There are rally folk everywhere on a Sunday <laughs> morning. It's amazing, but everyone is looking a little bit tired. A little jaded, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, but, but that's rallying, isn't it? You know, these guys and girls have put everything into yesterday. It was an enormous day. And you really can't blame them for going out and maybe letting their hair down a touch last night. You'll tell me more about this than I know, but certainly I came here last year for the first time. And it, it's not a rally that had been away for a long, long time, but it maybe hadn't had the kind of effort put into it that it deserved because it, it is something different and the daybreak has always yes. been something different. It came back with a bang last year and it, it you know it, it did deliver something very different and they've built on that this year haven't they? Absolutely the thought that's gone into this rally the structure of it the theme the future as well just so exciting everyone is getting right behind it which is amazing to see. The drivers what do we call it the driver Briefing. The official welcome. The official welcome. Mm -hmm. yeah. Toyota New Zealand headquarters. It, it really was so fantastic, you know. Toyota very much from the, the get-go at the, the welcome drinks mm -hmm. there. They got behind it and they, they hosted us and there were a few drinks. There was maybe a little bit to eat there as well. But it was a great <laughs> challenge, a little bit. <laughs> I, I am I am the rally, the official rally food thief. Wherever there's food, I'm finding it. I'm the, I grazed all weekend. If you lose Colin, Colin's at the sausage sizzle. Sausage sizzle. I had a few different sausages this weekend. It was really quite entertaining. I've been talking about your sausage. Really? Sausages, oh. sorry. <laughs> but it was a really good chance to catch up with a few people. And it was a really, really good chance to catch up with T-Mac and to see well, you know, one, one of his incredible creations. It's world class, that oh. starlet. Now, a lot of you will recognize this man, T-Mac. He is, well, one half of the driving force behind the Daybreaker Rally, but we have two very special beasts next to us here, T-Mac. This incredible AP4 car, and perhaps this even more incredible little starlet. How good is it to be here in the beating heart of Toyota New Zealand with these two incredibly important cars, T-Mac. Yeah, look, a um, little bit of a boyhood dream, I dare I say. Uh, I've driven, you know, I live locally and driven past this place many, many times. And uh, I mean, to have my own car that I've owned for 27 years and uh, Jack Hawkswood's car, of which I've been had a big hand in the, with the creation of it and running the team. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool, pretty special for me, that's for sure. Tell me a little bit about, in particular, the Starlet. I saw it for the first time last year. It is just a beautiful looking car, but it's a beautiful piece of engineering as well, isn't it? Yeah, look, I've got an engineering background. I'm a fitter turner by trade. Um, 
and I, I like to create things that are really different and out of the box. I didn't start rallying for many, many years, and I had a 4K in it and in a 1300 class, and I wanted to go a bit quicker. Put in a motorcycle engine and just grunted along. And life changes, and, and there's different demands on life, and so I've had a rest and, and put the girl away in the shed for a while, and now I've spent the last sort of coming up 10 years now, and I just did this monster rebuild on it, and... Uh, so now it's a, a Hayabusa supercharged and I've made my own transfer box that bolts on the back of it and that alone was a large project itself. Um, so I've just finished my final dyno so it's sitting exactly on 348 horsepower. Oh, that's bonkers. That is absolutely bonkers. That is more than a Rally 2 car. And what does it weigh? Ah, uh, well I haven't officially properly weighed it but it generally sits around that 800 kilo mark and just a tiny bit more, maybe 18, 820. That is a proper weapon. Yeah, I've, I've, I've only just put it on the stones just once the other day and uh, I need to work a bit on my traction. I mean, I'd argue that, that T-Mac was maybe the most important person there. <laughs> the maybe, VIP. Maybe, but there were some VIPs <laughs> and that was great to see as well. It's, you know, as you find with these events, really, it, they go nowhere unless you get the backing of the local council, the mm -hmm. local businesses. And mm -hmm. we had the mayor, we had actually the, the mayor minutes. of... Palmerston North. Perfect, Who Smith. else did we have? We had the Lady Mayor of Fielding. <laughs> Fielding, Helen Walkers. Really, so good. really good to see them there Thursday evening, just mucking in, meeting the drivers, mm -hmm. and, and really just you know kicking the whole rally off with their presence. It was great. Absolutely, it was great. And uh, not only the speeches from from Grant Smith and other VIPs at the event, but it was also great to talk to to Paul, one of the organisers, yeah. who's just put his heart and soul into this rally. We've got a really unique situation with rallying with motorsport, um, out of all motorsports. We're the only motorsport that has road registered cars that are competing. So that means that we can drive our cars into the community spaces. And so if we can involve the general public by doing that, by actually getting into their space, um, and we do that through um, driver signing sessions, meet the drivers, and we do that in the middle of town centres. That's a really great opportunity that we've got with the sport to introduce our sport to an audience that doesn't actually know about why the rally is there. So what we've found with this event is we've been pushing really hard on our community activations and we're just overwhelmed with the support that we're getting or the inquiry that we're getting from people that want to come to the event and they want to get a, a spectator guide and they want to go and see the rally for the first time ever. Do you know what? He's an incredible man, Paul. He really is. Um, I, don't tell him this. I think he's a bit of a visionary. He gets it. He gets what rallying's all about and he gets what rallying needs. And you know, it was a lovely little interview you did there with him and I, and I really like the fact that he talks about connecting with a new audience and that is one of the core elements of this event. It's really you know, a lot of what they're trying to do here is mm -hmm. introduce rallying to new people. And, yeah. and we saw that, at, you know, right from the get-go, from uh, the, the square in the middle of Palmerston North here. You know, so many kids there. It was wonderful to see, wasn't it? It was amazing. Do you know what else they did that I found really, really exciting? Really exciting. Because I've heard talk of this before at the very highest levels of rallying, convoys. So all those cars <laughs> okay. that we saw in the square, 60 cars. 60 cars. They were brave enough. They were... You know, forward thinking enough to say, I tell you what, how do we how do we announce our presence in Palmerston <laughs> North? Well we'll drive a convoy yeah. of sixty cars, sixty rally cars through the centre of town. Absolutely. Rush hour Friday evening. Through eight sets of traffic lights. <laughs> I'd have to say, you know, when I've heard it talked about before, people have dismissed it, it's just too hard, it's too difficult. Strategically mm -hmm. it won't work. Yeah. And not really in their vocabulary, is it? it they work. made it work. And it was just for me. Seeing the images of those cars coming through and then seeing them entering gorgeous. the stadium was just, it, it literally made the hair stand up. And the community is such a, an integral part of rallying, you know, and, and we, don't, we don't operate unless the community buy into our mm -hmm. events. Uh, you know, the community sponsors, the community backers, but in particular, in a rural community like this, you know, it's the landowners, it's the farmers, it is the rural communities. If they don't buy into our events, we if we don't look after events. them, we, we don't rally, do we? No. Well, we've come out to the heart of the rural Rangatiki, to the Otto Witte Station. 
which is really something very special indeed. I've heard a little bit about this place, but I want to find out more. And this is the man who is going to tell me more. Charlie Duncan. Charlie, thank you very much for A, having us here today, but B, more importantly, tomorrow you're going to host the service park, one of the service parks for the rally. Uh, but blown away, it's a beautiful place, but we're only seeing a very small part of the station here. Tell me a little bit first about what we're seeing and tell me a little bit about the scale of the operation here. We, we're going to be farming 400 hectares now with the cadet school which is basically where we're happy to keep that amount to run yeah. the cadet school. Prior to that we were 1800 hectares. Hello beasties, hello beasties. We were employing shepherds that couldn't do the tasks that we wanted to do. Yeah. So they were turning up with, uh, we used to say, phone book type status CVs yeah. telling us that they could do everything but they couldn't do right. anything. And so that, along with when we were doing community events, we had no young people in our community. Yeah. So I was the youngest at 33 at the, at the time and then there was another guy the same age as me and then the next jump up was late 40s, early 50s. Yeah. And we just sort of couldn't see any su succession in our community with no young people coming into it. How difficult is it to, to persuade youngsters these days that there is a life in farming, that farming is a, a viable occupation? Because I know certainly back in the UK it's a struggle. It's a struggle to get youngsters involved. Well, it's hard work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it is, it is but yeah. interestingly enough. But rewarding, my goodness me. Yeah. You know, look at this beautiful countryside. And look at your yeah. office. Yeah, exactly. It's exciting, isn't it, to have the rally in this region and, you know, to see the rally showcasing, I suppose, the beauty and the wonderful industry and the projects like yours. It, it, the, the rally helps to do all that. Oh, look, it, yeah, I, th I think if, if I've grown up with a lot of farmers who have been really negative about the rally over my lifetime. And, uh, one of the interesting things that people pretty quickly forget is that the best money that can come into a region is outside money. Yeah. And when something like this rally is going through, it is an inconvenience in some ways to somebody who wants to move a stock on the road at that particular day. But with the plenty of the organisation of this rally in particular for us, because we haven't seen them here for a while, but this rally has been particularly well organised. The communication to the community has been fantastic. I don't think there's anybody that doesn't know that they're not coming. And I think it's an absolute gem that, you know, we've got people like Hayden Patton, they're going to drive up our driveway. Yeah, absolutely. Go, I'll be taking a photo of that, <laughs> making sure that our Facebook page is showing that we've had, we've had yeah. some pretty distinguished people through. And there's lots more than just him too. But do you know what? There's a real connection there, isn't there, between what the rally's doing and what the Ottawitty station's doing. Mm -hmm. It's about connecting with youth you know, and, and trying to communicate and Absolutely. trying to show a future and a different sort of future that's not all about screens and iPads mm -hmm. and telephones, you know. The Autoweighty station is saying, yeah. the land here is so important, the husbandry of the land is so important, the guardianship of the land mm -hmm. is so important. And it doesn't naturally progress unless you actually motivate and engage the youth. That's and that's so what they're true. doing there. So and it's the true. same as what Paul and T-Mac are doing in this rally. Mm -hmm. Rallying doesn't progress. Rallying doesn't survive unless you engage with the youth and show them there's an alternative. Show them there's another way and to what they them. see on TikTok and Tiki mm -hmm. Toki and Instagram <laughs> and so Facebooky and all that nonsense. I love it. I, and there's a real connection there and there a is. real kind of, you know, between what we're doing with rallying and what a lot of these community groups are doing. I have to say, I hate stadium super specials. <laughs> I hate them with a passion. They're not rallying. Oh, we could tell. Yeah, I've genuinely never seen anything quite like it, but not that one. <laughs> we were standing on the inside, weren't we? And it was just, the first two cars off was like, wow. Colin nearly wow. had a heart attack. <laughs> wow. And the speed, the spectacle, the sound. Yeah, it wasn't just round and round and round. You know, they, they blasted along the outside, they went, into a car park, they went around the donut. They, there were trees involved. <laughs> there were, it, and, oh. and there were the occasional red flag, and Eat. there was occasional jeopardy, and it was like, whoa! Two cars on the track at one time. That's what made it. <laughs> that, and that was the ambitious part of it, mm -hmm. you know, because it was a relatively tight stage. And you'd have absolutely understood if they said, let's go the safe option. And the safe option would have been one car at a time. Oh no, oh no, let's take some risks and let's make this a bit. Well, let's put the special into super special. Oh, they did that. Oh, they did that. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. It was a great, great, great way to start the rally. It gave us an indication, perhaps, 
of what we might expect over the course of the weekend in terms of the competition. It did. Hayden was out there in uh, true fine form as expected. Three seconds faster than Brendan Reeves, our Australian VIP in the two car team. I love that, VIP. I thought <laughs> you were going to say our Australian interloper. I was trying <laughs> to be super nice. Yeah, it works. <laughs> You know, the competition did start off early, and that's the DNA. That's absolutely in the DNA of the Daybreaker. Mm -hmm. and, and again, it was incredible. <laughs> you know, we're looking at our watches. It's 8 o'clock, and we've got four <laughs> stages down in the morning. It's like, this can't be right. <laughs> yeah. You know, by 9 o'clock, we've had six stages. Is, <laughs> what is going on? Completely discombobulated by it all. But there was some interesting stuff going on in the stages in terms of the competition. It, it was challenging. They were really really yes. good roads in beautiful mm -hmm. condition and we saw some really good competition out there we did it was tight to start the day and mm. um, the feedback that we got everyone just loved the tight twisty nature it was so demanding so fast but we did see that on ricky as well didn't we yeah 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 and that 37 kilometer stage as well you know as you say tight twisty is busy for the co-drivers as well um but hayden bad yeah, he was world class, we know that. We absolutely know he's world class, but he, he dominated proceedings from start to finish, more or less. But in the yes. morning, he really stamped his authority. When others mm -hmm. found it a little bit tricky, you know, when it's dark, when it's gloomy, you know, you, you tend to be a little bit hesitant if you're not used to it, if you're not comfortable. This is so None true. of that with bad, was it? <laughs> no, and what I really love about having Hayden here on these roads is that he continues to show us just what is possible. Oh, look, he's, he, he, you know, he's a champion. He's a winner. He is. Uh, he's a world champion. He is. Um, and he sets a benchmark. And and, uh, he, and we are know, so lucky to so have lucky, him here. So lucky. Um, you were very lucky during the course of the day that we, we got to a couple of points where we could see really close up you know, the cars, and, and it is interesting because you see different styles, you see different approaches, you see different levels of commitment. There was a consistent level of commitment from Padden, and it was just absolute, absolute commitment. Absolutely. Not only from Padden, though, from the whole PRG team, you know, he yeah. runs those incredible cars at the top there. Brendo, Emma, Stewie Reid, yeah. just, oh. Yeah, yeah, and it, and it is great to see that, that there are, right through the field, Wonderful cars, beautifully prepared cars, but at the top end there, some top, top quality rally cars. Some of the best rally cars in world the world class. being driven. World class, world class cars being driven hard. On world class roads. <laughs> I, I, I'm buying it, right? You don't, you don't have to sell it to me much now. I'm buying it. These, these are quite probably the best roads in the world. The Finns will argue hard. I'd love to see, <laughs> I'd love to set up a debate between you know, the Finnish rally mafia and the New Zealand <laughs> rally map. I'd like to sit them around the table and have it. And I tell you whose side I would be on. I, I would be just heading towards the Silver Fern. <laughs> heading oh, towards yeah. the Silver Fern because they, they are just magnificent. I guess though the only disappointment yesterday morning was our championship leader at the time before the start of the rally. That was hugely disappointing to see. Robbie Stokes has had a great season so far. Uh, he put everything on the line, but a uh, new opportunity for Ben. Yeah, I, I, you know, Robbie Stokes interests me because he, he he's he's a he's a kid that's he's not a kid, but he's a young driver still who learns. And he it was interesting when we caught up with him for the rally. He, he's got a bit of a reputation, and and there's nothing wrong with having a reputation. Colin McRae had that he's reputation. All, in. all or nothing. All in. All or nothing. Um, but he said, you know, he had a bit of an epiphany early on in the year where he woke up one morning and thought. There's a different way to do this. <laughs> and that's why he leads the championship. Not, uh -huh. not after the rally, but before the rally he did. But the problems he back. has, it, that is part and parcel. And that's what makes you grow as a driver, dealing with those difficult situations. Mm -hmm. Kat, the Stokes team, it's uh, really very much a family affair, isn't it? It is, it is. We have uh, Amy, the sister, managing the whole team. So Robbie and his little brother, Jack. Um, but not only the Stokes, we have uh, Andrew and Hayden Graves as well, Dad and Son team, Ben and Charlotte Harding, who, who came away with an award, which is incredible. And how old was Charlotte? 15. 15. 15. It's astonishing. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. And also, we cannot go past the Hudsons, legends in New Zealand rallying. Rocky, Lisa, the parents are so proud of their kids, Amy and Jared, co-drivers for car one and two at this event. Just incredible. Just incredible. The rally royalty here in New Zealand, the Hudson's. They truly rally. are. Two kids, 
both in their early 20s, mm -hmm. both doing their 50th event here. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, it's definitely pretty special. Um, I'm part of the same team. We've um, stood on the podium before together in two-wheel drive class. Fortunately, not this time, but uh, even just to be competing against each other and, yeah, one and two, and, yeah, in a pretty cool team is, yeah, pretty special. And is there a friendly rivalry going on? Oh, definitely. I think there's definitely the old, the old friendly rivalry, but um, also we're obviously teammates as well, so we're trying to help each other out. But yeah, there's definitely a bit of trash talk, yeah. Bit of banter between the stages too? Yeah, yeah definitely. I told him we nearly had him in that last one. It was, yeah, it was yeah. really it was close. So. It was, it was yeah, touch and go. Lucky. When you'd go to rallies with your parents, did you ever imagine as, as little kids that you'd be here leading the charge in New Zealand rallying? I don't know about that much, but I um, definitely knew we wanted to get into it. And a few times we sort of missed out on going, so we got dropped off at Nana's, uh, so Mum and Dad could compete. But when we actually could go along, it was definitely straight away knew that's what we wanted to do. And yeah, to get to this level was just awesome. Definitely, you sort of look at, you know, stand on the sidelines. You're like, I'd love to be there one day. Never sort of thought it would happen, but um, yeah, very, very happy to be here. Very happy to, to have it happen. Yeah. And how do we think Mum and Dad feel about this? Uh, they've said multiple times they're quite proud. Um, it's pretty cool, you know, seeing uh, more so for Dad in the last few years, but on on the podium for NZRC and racing at the top level, and now for us to have our turn, it's, it's pretty cool. You know, the FIA who, who run motorsport. Um, they do some really great stuff to encourage women into motorsport. And, and it's, a, it's an effort, it's a big job. We know there are issues all around the world. But what I love about here in New Zealand, and it struck me when I did the Otago Rally for the first time, is how many women there are. And do you know where I think that comes from? I think it comes from you know, the piece you just did there. It's the families. Families in motorsport lead to more women in motorsport. And you do it so well here in New Zealand. Still a way to go, but, but you know, it's, it's as good as I've seen it anywhere in the world. Absolutely. I remember uh, six years ago, we had a chat at Otago Rally and uh, we talked about just how many female competitors there were there and it has continued to grow. 40% that Otago Rally, 40%, it's just incredible. Uh, yeah, the New Zealand Rally community should be congratulated. Mid-morning, Kat. Seven stages down <laughs> and we headed back to fielding. We did, 10.30 in the morning with a driver's signing session in the square. Again, it was so good to see so many of the community getting behind that. Uh, so many kids, so many of the community groups. We've got barbecue, we've got bacon egg sandwiches, sausage sizzle, cans of drink, a whole bunch of whānau, baked, um, all sorts of yummy goods for you to come down and purchase. And you've got all the kids out helping as well. It's yeah. great that they get involved, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the kids, whānau, everyone's here. Yeah. And I'm told you've provided some marshals as well. Some of your, is, who's that? Is that the teachers or the kids have gone out to marshal? Yeah, so we've got kids in whānau who have all signed up to marshal um, and yeah, they've done all their learning to be able to do that and then they'll be out on the course. There's about 15 or so uh, Fano out there at the moment. Absolutely love this. I love the way that the community of fielding just get behind this rally. Yeah. Is it something that the kids get excited about? Yeah, yeah. So we've got heaps of Fano and kids that come yeah. to our school around here this morning, um, checking out the cars, getting signings from the rally drivers. So yeah, it's great. Well, listen, we really appreciate your support uh, and we love the fact you're doing it with a huge smile on your face. Uh, Thank you very much for everything you do. All right, have a great day. Thank you. All the best. All the best. There we go. Isn't that great to see? I think, well, was that the headmaster? I'm not sure. But whoever he was, what a jolly fellow he was. And absolutely great to see the little ones, to see the teachers and the parents and the helpers. What a wonderful job they do. Community support, not just this rally, it's absolutely central to just about any rally. Without the community, none of it happens tell you what I think that was my second sausage of the morning <laughs> my second sausage of the morning they, they had some fried onions as well but I, I, how can you eat sausage and fried onions without bread and not make a terrible mess it's never <laughs> did, really stopped me you before did very it? well I, I did, did okay but I'm glad you kept them down uh, wasn't the case for all of our competitors was it <laughs> well well that's a really good point um Car sickness car <laughs> yeah. sickness we, we, we had a little wander around the service park and there was a lot of talk about yeah, car sickness, ginger. Ginger, something I've discovered this weekend. Ginger is an absolutely magical remedy for car <laughs> sickness, apparently. What happened? Oh, I just started feeling a bit funny and then pulled over at the end of the stage and just yeah, ran to the trees and he went for it. Uh, yeah, just sort of left the breakfast out on the stage. So I've got the ginger, ginger little pills. I've got a patch on there. Um, the, doc, the doctor's prescribed me with his anti-nausea pill. So yeah, we're on all the good drugs today. So yeah. <laughs> Not only for co-drivers, but drivers too. Brendan Reeves? I've never seen a driver. I don't <laughs> think I've ever seen a driver struggling with car sickness, but poor old Brendo, he's such 
A lovely guy, such an experienced competitor. Who yeah. got Darcy? Oh, I've got to go and speak to Brenda. Oh, I've got to go. I, you know, he's old enough, he's sensible enough, he's daft enough not to get car sick. Brendan Reeves getting yeah, car sick. Yeah. I'm going to interrupt yeah. this conversation. I'm very sorry. You're right. I've just heard the fact that I just do not believe your co drivers telling tales. Telling tales. Said you were feeling a little car sick in the dark this morning, Brenda. What's that all about? Yeah, I don't know, Cole. Um, yeah, it wasn't nice. I'm still not completely over it now, to be fair, but. Um, it's getting better, I've got the colour in my face, so that's good. Do you know what I can recommend for? Ginger, I'm told. I've learned yes. this weekend that ginger apparently is very, very good. Can we go and find you a bottle of ginger ale, maybe some ginger snaps, some chocolate gingers? Yeah, I'd we'll be keen for that. Yeah, my, my dad gets car sick actually driving, and my brother too. Wow. Um, so they take ginger tablets, but I don't usually have too much of a problem. Um, but I think you know, learning a new car, concentrating, looking short distance in the dark, and it's so, so twisty. Probably one of the twistiest rallies I've ever done. Even um, then the power stage was fast, but previous stage really twisty again. Um, but yeah, we're, we're learning the car and that's what it's all about. It was really lovely though to, to spend some time in the service area there. We were there last year, weren't we, in field, we at the back of the Manfield uh, racetrack. Yes. So really nice to be there. And the atmosphere was fantastic. There was a lot of fun still being had in the service area. <laughs> so much banter. Stewie Reed, the fabulous Stewie, sausage on a stick. Where did you get that? Have you got one for me? Yeah, over there. Apparently bread's fattening, so I thought I'd just do the sausage on a fork. But can you do it without a wee bit of tomato sauce? Yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily need tomato. Mm. I'd go HP, but mm. they don't have any. Now, Stewie Reed, we saw you at the start of the long stage. Clearly, and the car looks great, looked quick. Can I be a little critical? Please do. Bloody hell, you're untidy. I've been having one of those events. It all started off on Friday night, giving the wall a bit of a speedway kiss. You're a talented man, a mighty talented man, a mighty ambitious man as well when you're driving at times. And it's you, it doesn't matter how old you get, and I'm not saying you're old, Stewie, because you're not old. Is there anything but, else you want to chuck in, Cole? <laughs> that was perhaps the single most offensive interview I have ever done, and I can't apologise enough. I'll buy you a, a nice bottle of wine, Stewie, to make up for that. What a wonderful job you do. Uh, how many kilos of sausages have you cooked this morning? Close to three. That's fantastic. Fat-free. Yeah. Fat, fat-free ones? Mm -hmm. Fat-free sausages? Yeah. That, that, no, I don't want a fat-free sausage. That's like having a decaffeinated coffee. Is that genuinely a fat-free sausage? Yeah. I'm going to try it, OK? Um, and what about the burgers? The burgers look really good. I don't want one. I don't want one. I re really don't, but they look really good. Yeah, they're beautiful, man. How many are you catering for? Uh, five. This is awfully hot, this is. You've given me, you've given me, and you've got to make Let's me eat it. Oh, I can't eat that. That's going to, and it's going to burn my fingers as well. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. I'm in a bit of a quandary. Um, a little bit of bread. You're a top man. There we go. There we go. Fabulous. I'm going to save that for later, and I'm going to come back and tell you how good you've... Are they your sausages? Have you bought them from somewhere? No, no, we bought them. Right, OK. We went up to a wonderful place yesterday afternoon where they were making their own sausages. It was wonderful. But well, it is illegal, isn't it, to have one of these without a bit of tomato sauce on it? Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. You better put some salt and pepper on that too if you can. Some what on it? Some salt and pepper. Oh, no, I stopped eating salt. Oh, oh genuinely, I had a health scare. Look at me. I look like an athlete. Yeah. Genuinely, I went to the doctors and she thought the blood pressure monitor was broken. It was such a, it was sky high. And I haven't had salt in six months. Oh, you're right. I'm very proud of myself. You look, you look good. You look right, yeah. You're right, and you look good as well. Uh, <laughs> which car are you in? Uh, I'm in the Evo 3 down the end. Very good. Yes. Yeah, so. It's going well this morning? Yeah, it's going good. Yeah, we had a good morning so far, and yeah, just finish off the day, really. Brendan Reeves and Amy Hudson. Uh, whereas, let's have a good look at Hayden's car as well, because these cars look really quite similar, but they're very different. Brendan's car is what they call an AP4 car. This really, other than a Rally 1 car, which is absolutely the pinnacle of rallying, this is the next best thing. It's an absolute weapon of a machine. You know, they'll only do, I guess, top speed in this one, Hayden, 185, 185, 190, something like that. And, and you know what? There are 25-year-olds, Subarus and Evos, that will do a higher top speed than this. But what's the most important thing about this car? How nimble it is, how quick the acceleration is. And as important as the acceleration is the braking ability. They can brake late, they can brake hard, they can take corners, the cornering speed. Ah, look at this, let's just watch this now. You know, now it gets a little busy, they're up against it with the time. So their time to be at the time control out of service is very close. 
These are enormously expensive. This is important. You know, if you're driving on the roads in New Zealand and your number plate is covered over, you can easily be pulled by the police. You have to be completely road legal. Hayden Padden, car number one. He was first into service. He'll be first out of service. He's leading the way by a long way. He's having a fabulous event out there. <laughs> Proper rallying. This is absolutely proper rallying. We've got the old Mitsubishi Evo. Jeff, what is your Evo? It's an Evo? Eight. An Evo 8. Uh, Jeff, tell me how the morning's gone for you. We talked to you last night. You, you were looking forward to it. Has the morning lived up to your expectations? Oh, it was going good for a start, but then the la uh, see, the big stage. We, um, ooh, we ooh. Look at that. Uh, tell me, how how does something like that happen? I know, it's all through the top of the calibre too. So it did, um, st the big stage with only front brakes on it. Wow. And then that little thing, trying to get the thing to turn in with just front brakes is very hard. You are? Nelson Law, driver, and Antonio, co-pilot. Fantastic. Uh, boys, we did see you in the long stage at the start. Yes. Uh, these cars go pretty well in there. Definitely, yeah. It's also a pretty exciting and fun stage, and, you know, there was a crowd there, so we tried our best to put on a, an exciting show for everyone. But tell me where you get the experience to tackle these stages, because I've, I've heard a little bit of rallying, heard about it on Vanuatu, and you haven't maybe got the stages like they've got here? That's actually a great question because, yeah, we have absolutely no experience back home in Vanuatu. PlayStation 4. <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> Watching YouTube. Watching Dirtfish on YouTube. <laughs> but it is fantastic because, you know, I don't know how big Vanuatu is. I reckon it's a pretty small place, right? And we've got, what, three crews from Vanuatu here? That's right. Three crews uh, ourselves. Julian and Pierre-Henri, so yeah, three crews representing Vanuatu in this in this Daybreaker Rally, which is awesome, good fun. It's obviously a strong rally community out there, even although you seem to just rally around the world's most active volcano, it's a strong rally community. Um, not, not yet, yeah, it's a very tight group of people, uh, otherwise not so much. There's a handful of cars that we can count that race on the island, but very passionate people, people with, who love cars, and uh, you know, you can literally go around, it's only about 170 kilometers around the island. So doing these stages is like going around the island six or seven times. <laughs> so yeah, we have good fun uh, doing this. Uh, yeah, we sit in the car for a long time, so it's, 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 uh, it's very interesting uh, when we do rallies here, it's great fun. I have to say it's wonderful to see you. Uh, you rent the cars, do you? Is that the way you do it? Do you rent these cars when you get here? No, so we work with uh, Force Motorsports and we actually purchased this vehicle from uh, Force Motorsports, Andrew Hawkswood and uh, his son, Jack Hawkswood. Right. Yeah, this used to be one of his uh, previous vehicles. So yeah, very happy with the vehicle. So you're over here pretty often then, rallying. I mean, you've got to get the most out of it, I guess. Yeah, it's a bit of a trip over, uh, but uh, definitely we try and come over as much as we can. Because, uh, yeah, the, the racing over here is really, really great. Well, it's wonderful to see you. It's wonderful to see you supporting and flying the flag for Vanuatu. I'm going to make it there one day. So it was back out, Kat, wasn't it, after service? <laughs> in a jolly mood. After talking to the drivers and the co-drivers, hearing their <laughs> yes. stories, back out into the stages. And we were lucky because we got to, uh, we got to some really good spots in the stages. And how good was it? to see the number of spectators out there. Absolutely. Well, I mean, the organisers have put so much thought into getting or allowing the community to get out there and see those cars, the QR codes that take you straight to these amazing spectator points. Uh, was there anyone in particular that caught your eye in those For me, cars? Zeal Jones. Mm. He was on fire around those corners. Uh, it's like he's been, he's been rallying that car for five years. This is his first season. In this uh, in this rally two car, and he is just at home. It's amazing. I have to say, you. Know, I asked you a bit about Zeal. I've, I've met him before, but I don't know an awful lot about him. And I hadn't realised he's 19 years old. I know. And with his auntie Waverly sitting next to him too, it's yeah. it's a true family unit. That one. Once again, a proper family affair. <laughs> Uh, and the thing to remember with Zeal as well is, mm, my little <laughs> hope. But aren't you a handsome Bye. fella? Aren't you a handsome fella? You Maybe not quite so much love this year. Oh, you didn't tram. How are you? Rock, sir. Are you well? Hey, aren't they all just lovely? <laughs> aren't they all ambush cats? <laughs> the best cats? kind of ambush. ambush. <laughs> the best kind of ambush. Rally royalty. We, we could not have been ambushed <laughs> by a, a, you know, a, a more, a better, more wonderfully kind of. A, the Hudson's just absolutely are all that is good about rallying. They really I are. I love them, they're wonderful. <laughs> and Brenda, we can't obviously forget Brenda as well. Uh, where were we talking about Zeal? Yeah, 19 years old. Mm -hmm. In a car that, yeah, it's a rally two car, and you looked and you say, okay, it's a Skoda, you should go reasonably well. It's old, it's old and it's 
It's a little bit tired, that car. And I mean, those cars don't perform unless you oh, make them perform, 100%, right? Like, 100%. you have to drive them aggressively to get the performance, to get those stage times out. And he does. He knows exactly what he's doing. And man, the prep that he puts in, it's next level. It really is. And you know what was really impressive as well? He managed to get the best out of that car when the weather turned. Okay, it was, it was damp all day. It was damp and we were, we were just a sketchy. little bit. But then it started raining. <laughs> and oh. did it rain. You know, should I, I come out to New Zealand and I love New Zealand. And this morning's lovely, there's a little bit of blue sky. Seems that every time I come out, doesn't matter what time <laughs> of year, as soon as the rally's on, <laughs> the rain comes down. The rain, remember last year we got absolutely saturated. Strange. Rally New Zealand last time on that final day when Robin mm -hmm. Perra won the mm -hmm. title. Two feet of mud. <laughs> I've never, ever seen so much mud. Um, but is that what makes great New Zealand rally drivers? The well, fact they have to deal with these conditions. You have to be adaptable. You have to mm. be flexible and ready for anything. Yeah. And I think we've seen that. And I think we've seen that. And the man that most ably demonstrated that this weekend was the man who eventually... Well, it was a dominant win. He took a really dominant win eventually. Hayden Padden and, and a milestone as well in his career. Absolutely. 400 stage wins wow. were ticked over at Daybreaker. Wow. And, and do you know what? He seems to still enjoy his rallying as much as he ever has. And, and he is fantastic for the New Zealand rally community to have him there as a benchmark. But you know, everything that he brings to any of the rallies that it's he attends, it's so, so important. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. He continues to show us just what's possible. He raises the bar. He shows us what these cars are capable of. And he encourages us also, supports the whole community to lift up together. It's, we are so fortunate. Yeah. And we caught up with Hayden at the end of the rally. So in the Daybreaker Rally, it's obviously been a, a really good day for us. Uh, everything's felt really good in the, in the car. Uh, the whole team, everything's gone like clockwork. Um, they have two cars at the end uh, with no problems at all. Uh, Brendan in fourth and, and of course ourselves for maximum points. So um, yeah, great day. Um, can't thank the team enough, our sponsors uh, and everyone that's helped making it possible. So obviously the weather's put on a bit of a show again, uh, but nevertheless everything's good and now we look forward to Bay of Plenty uh, in a few weeks time. Yeah, many congratulations to Hayden Padden. Not just Hayden, obviously. I, you know, it's a team in the car there. What a great effort by absolutely. young Jared. Young Jared, absolutely. Amazing job, as always. He's such a professional and he will go so far in the sport. Yeah, he really will. Second, and I have to say, it was a really hard earned second place for Ben Hunt because, you know, you. You have to deal with everything that rallying throws at you, and generally that's in the stages, that's to do with the car. He was really uncomfortable in the car this weekend. Proper problems with his back, but he fought yeah, through it. Yeah, what I really love about Ben and Tony is their consistency. It doesn't yeah. matter where they are in the yeah. country. And uh, I mean, wherever you go, the regions, uh, they they give you such such different gravel roads, tarmac roads, but they're consistent throughout. And, yeah. and they showed us that this weekend. They pushed through and they did so well. They did a great job out there. What's his reward for his second place here? Well, he leads the championship. It was awesome to come back into the Manawatu and um, yeah, get into some real technical twisty roads. It's a uh, big change from the South Island and obviously Hayden's world class. He was unbelievable today and awesome to have Zeal on the podium and another Skoda. And how did the Skoda go out there on the stages today? Yeah, it's awesome car ride, especially for these roads. It's um, WRC2 in these conditions is unreal. It's what they're built for. Final step of the podium, Cats. We've already talked quite a bit about him. But what a joy, what a joy. I have to say, it's a smile that lights up any room, but it wasn't the biggest smile in <laughs> New Zealand yesterday. His dad, I caught up with his dad, the proudest dad in all of New Zealand, I suspect, yesterday. Zeal Jones, as we've said, 19 years old, his first ever podium in the New Zealand Rally Championship. His dad said to me, he said, remember this name, remember that smile, yeah. remember today, because yeah. he is a champion in waiting. He is. Hard to disagree. Seal will go so far in New Zealand rally and international rallying, I have no doubt about that. Uh, he earned that fair and square yesterday, he was so impressive out there on those stages. Your first ever podium at 19 years old in the New Zealand Rally Championship. Tell me what it means to you. Yeah, no, look, it's awesome. It's really cool to repay the favour to the whole team and my co-driver. They put in a lot of work over the middle of the season and the break. We reconditioned the engine, the whole car, to make sure that the car's really good for the rest of the season. So it's really cool to be able to do that for them and as well as it for myself. We knew it was coming sometime and we just needed to believe and that's all we did and that's why this result has come. And it's so important, isn't it? Because your budgets are never easy to find, but results like this 
they help they help in that quest to pull the budget together for the next step yeah no exactly that's exactly the key and we need to keep banking these results and there's still two more rounds in this championship left to go and we really want to aim to get our goals and succeed in them so we've set them out purposely for that target so we just got to keep aiming high and um yeah this is definitely a confidence booster now i'd never met your dad before but i knew which man he was he was the man with the biggest smile in probably the South Island, uh, the proudest dad in New Zealand, I suspect, this afternoon. Uh, he's put a lot into supporting your career, hasn't he? Yeah, exactly. Parents are really important in things like this in terms of investment and time and money effort, all of the above. So it's really cool to repay back to him and make sure that he keeps believing in me as much as I believe in myself. So it's really cool to share that with dad and um yeah these things are special and we just got to keep doing more of these things so how do you take that next step from here then how do you consolidate on this performance how do you then move on to the uh next step of the podium yeah we just got to keep working on our um process on on reflecting on what we did right and what we could do better so we just got to make sure that that's everything has done right and um yeah it's been it's been really cool to have the whole team here to to support us and not only them but everyone else around us have made this possible it was a wonderful wonderful performance so that was our top three then at the end of the event but there were one or two other noteworthy performances out there. Brendan Reeves, who you might have just spotted a moment or two ago, it was fantastic to see Brendan making his way across the Dutch. Is that what you call it? The ditch? <laughs> the, the ditch. The Dutch. <laughs> well, get in there. He's learning. I have to work Be on kind. my TV accent. <laughs> uh, Brendan Reeves, it was fantastic to see him back out. But do you know what? I, I really enjoyed seeing Emma Gilmore this weekend. Because she's had a tough old time. She's had to, you know, she battled for a long time with a car that was difficult. She got hold of the Citroen, which is a really capable it's car. It's gorgeous. But it's taken her a while to, to, you know, to get to grips with that car, to find a setup she's comfortable with. I think maybe this was her best performance in that car. I'm not surprised too. That car is so well suited to these tight, twisty roads, and I have no doubt that she will have the same kind of success in the North Island. Yeah, and it was great to see so many cars in Park Fermi. You know, thank goodness we didn't see any big incidents out there. It no was, damage. At the end that. of the day, it was, an, again, a tremendously well-run rally and a hugely successful rally. Testament to the to the time and effort put into ensuring the success of this really, rally. It really was. 193 kilometers. Mm -hmm. 300 and something touring Ks too. Over the course of effectively a day, it, it is a, for me, it's a blueprint, not just for how to run a great rally, but you know, how to make rallying attractive and sustainable. And how to give the competitors actually what they want. Value for money, to mm -hmm. treat the competitors as customers. We all want to be and customers. And make it an adventure. And it was that, it was absolutely that. Even at three o'clock on Saturday morning, it was an adventure. Look, I've had a wonderful time, very, very fortunate. And it's my second visit to this part of the world. I discovered the glorious Rangitiki and the mighty Manawatu last year. And it was a joy to come back and see those regions again this year and to see a rally developing. I thought it was great last year. It was better this year, it if was. that's possible. Highlights of the weekend for you, Kat? Was there a highlight? Just seeing all the kids out there, just yeah. so inspired, the next generation of rally drivers and co-drivers. Yeah. I've got to say, you have taken to your new duties incredibly well, <laughs> but, you call it. But, but I could sense a touch of frustration at times. <laughs> you got really excited seeing the cars, seeing the challenge of the co-drivers. Was it a little tricky for you to actually, you know, it was such a great rally to actually be watching from the outside rather than competing from the inside? It's not easy, it's not easy to watch. I grew up watching these stages as a baby uh, on some of the roads that we drove this weekend and um, to drive them last year as, as a car competing in Daybreaker Rally, I mean, I it was awesome to see just how excited everyone was and, and know that they were feeling exactly what I felt last year. And I can't wait to see that same energy next year. Yeah, it really was. It was fantastic. I absolutely loved every minute of being back here in the region. You know, meeting some incredible characters, the guys in the community doing such a fabulous job. So many of them, you've seen them in the video, I won't go through them all again, but I think special mention at the end of this video for Paul and for T-Mat, the two guys who are the driving force of this rally. They are very special men indeed. They'll say, yeah, we're supported by a team, and they are supported by a team, but they inspire that team to get up, you know, at three in the morning, to work right through the night to make sure that we can all go out and enjoy the sport. Boys, you did a wonderful, wonderful job 
with your team. The people of the region, you did a wonderful job in supporting the rally. It's been magnificent. I've enjoyed every minute of it. Hope you've enjoyed our highlights video, folks. We will see you all again. Same time, same place. Hopefully, Kat, <laughs> next here, year. Next year.